Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to have a look at a subject that I love and I think you guys love it too and that is the subject of hidden gem fragrances. Before we get into that, something a bit different for today's intro. Some of you, my regular viewers, both of you, may remember that way back about a year ago I was featuring a couple of intros where I shared with you some emails from a kind of a troll of the channel called Dr. Vladimir Kramens Bulovich. Uh, he was gonna release a fragrance called Swordfish. All kinds of interesting things happened. Anyway, I'm gonna share with you a great recent email that he sent me. It's quite a sad story, and I, I thought that it would be uh, worth sharing with you guys, so here we go. This is a genuine email that I received. I haven't made this up, it's honestly true. Well, today I want to delete. You can count on that. Today I was involved in an accident. I was feeling very suicidal so I went for a drive. I played my favourite MP3 in the car, Captain Beefheart. My Audi has the latest stereo. I was driving along and there was youths in front messing about, chucking McDonald's wrappers out the car. Then all of a sudden I see this carrier bag come out the window. It was flying towards me. As it hit the windshield it exploded and the contents, which was sick vomit, splattered all over the windscreen. I couldn't see anything. I applied the brakes, then next thing I know I hear this huge noise and I hit something. I stopped, got out the car and it turns out I hit a staff terrier dog. It was laying there by my car not moving. Next thing I know the owner, a solid brute, shouts at me. Hey you killed my dog you f Then he gets the dog lead and wraps it around my neck, trying to strangle me. I said do it you as I don't wish to live anyway. I came out to die you prat. He let me go, then he spat on my face. He went to the dog and shouted, Sherbet, Sherbet, are you alive? The dog failed to respond. He was dead as a dodo. The brute was so, ex up the brute was so upset, so I thought, f*** this, and drove off and rushed home. What a day. I'm glad I'm still here, though. Choose life. Choose a f***ing good car. Okay, so thank you for that moving story, Dr. Bulovich. Okay, so let's get into the, the subject of today's video, hidden gem fragrances. So I've got five really, really good fragrances that don't get much talk online, certainly in, in the YouTube fragrance community, and they're absolute beauty. So here we go, the first one is this one. Farina Original Eau de Cologne, first released in 1709. This was featured uh, this year in a Jeremy Fragrance video where he bought a bottle and said what a great fragrance it was, is, and he also tried to buy the company, he said, typical of Jeremy. I don't think the video's up anymore. Uh, so it's Farina 1709 from the town of Cologne, and hence this, the, you know, the phrase Eau de Cologne originates from this fragrance. This is the first ever Eau de Cologne fragrance. Really the modern world of fragrance began with this, and it was a gentleman called uh, Giovanni Maria Farina who created it. He was an Italian uh, immigrant into Germany and he basically wanted to capture the smell that he remembered as the smell of Italy, the smell of, I think he said it was like a beautiful spring morning just after the rain with bergamot and citrus notes as the, the predominant thing, a really, really fresh scent. In fact, I will list the note listing. You've got orange, lemon, grapefruit, bergamot, citron, floral notes and herbal notes. Loads of famous people have reputedly worn this, including apparently Mozart and Napoleon Bonaparte apparently this was the one he used to douse himself in before uh, battle so it's even older than 4711 cologne and it's it, it's in the vein of things like 4711 cologne or neroli portofino from tom ford but it's different it's more citrusy actually uh, that they have a very kind of soapy neroli vibe and this has a, um, maybe there's some neroli in there too but you get more of this really lovely melange of citrus notes bergamot orange lemon it's just really really juicy and fresh and then it's kind of white musky undertone maybe some herbal tones in there of a sort of hard to identify nature but it's exquisitely natural smelling doesn't last mega long but it's not as terrible terrible as you might think for an eau de cologne. It's not the cheapest thing in the world, but uh, a really, really great high quality fresh fragrance. I've had it in my pocket this week and just been spraying and reapplying. Don't be mean guys, you know, if you're, you don't like the performance or whatever. If you have something super natural smelling, very, very fresh and really including a lot of natural ingredients, it might not be the strongest, best performing thing ever, but if you take this out and about with you, keep reapplying it, you get this zestiness, this freshness that, you know, many, many niche brands would envy. Absolutely superb, love, love, love. Farina 1709 should be really, anyone a real fragrance enthusiast should probably consider having a bottle in their collection. Totally unisex, of course. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget that I have a code SMELLY10 for executiveshaving.co.uk. There's a link in the description. Apart from doing free, uh, 
shaving stuff for men. They have a fantastic range of really affordable fragrances, including things like Fra Rennick, my total favorite citrus cheapy aftershave, and that is from a band called brand called Extro. All their other stuff on there is really cheap and really good. And also Nevis Eau de Cologne Stroke Aftershave, or is it Eau de Toilette? Anyway, it's, I think it's a, the strength of Nevis is Eau de Toilette-esque in reality. And it's very similar to Green Irish Tweed, in fact, better than many rather expensive clones of that. So check them out, link in the description, smelly tends your code. Next up then, uh, this is from a superb brand and the fragrance is Tobacco Rose by Papillon. So this is a brand based in the UK by the rather glamorous perfumer Liz Moores and she is a superb perfumer. There's a load of really good stuff from this brand now, although unlike some brands, they're not pumping out four new fragrances a month, which I kind of like. This is one of their earlier releases because it goes back to 2014. Uh, the notes for Tobacco Rose, you've got Bulgarian Rose and Rose de Mai, combined with Oak Moss, Ambergris, Beeswax and Peru Balsam. This is uh, unlike the other one, which was a bit more of a spring, summer appropriate scent. I've been wearing it all week now anyway. It's in December, I don't care. Tobacco Rose, lovely for the, the sort of colder seasons because it's got real depth. It's one of the best rose fragrances I've smelled. A very bitter, slightly dark rose, not a so-called jammy sweet rose. And again, very unisex smelling, uh, certainly fine for guys. As we notice there, there isn't an actual tobacco note in the listing, but there's this overall air of a kind of tobacco-esque greenness about the scent, which is really, really nice. It's kind of spicy. I find it quite dry, very, very grown up smelling and lovely, lovely kind of oak moss and slightly resinous accords in the base as well with that uh, peribal peribalsam. Just a really, really complex grown up rose fragrance that doesn't smell overtly feminine. Certainly women can wear it and enjoy it, but you know, it's, it's not a kind of girly, fluffy pink rose. It's a, a dark, almost brooding scent, but it really, really just exquisite, beautiful, classy stuff. Uh, the beeswax kind of thing. There's this kind of just a hint of sweetness, enough sweetness just to balance things out. I, I'm a bit weird and probably completely wrong, but I think I pick up on some patchouli in there. It's sort of a bit fresh, but it's also very woody, very dry, and it's just a, a beautiful rose tobacco combo up there with absolute best rose fragrances. And uh, yeah, arguably, I mean, more interesting in some ways than things like Naxos, which is a really nice tobacco fragrance. It's a bit more clever and um, off the radar, not the obvious way to use a tobacco note. Exquisite stuff, tobacco rose, British house, Papillon, I'll link them in the description too, just to be nice. Don't forget, if you'd like to join the Smelly Army Private Members Club over on Patreon, there's a link in the description to do that. It costs just $2 a month and you get an extra video from me every week. Plus, you get to watch everything I've already uploaded in there. We're building a really nice community, lots of interaction, and I'd love to see you in there. Okay, something completely different. Another glamorous lady involved in this one, and this is Elizabeth Taylor's Passion for Men. First release in 1989. Wow, they're really interesting, and this is a fantastic cheapie. The last two, kind of, I would call them both niche, but not mega, mega expensive niche. This one, very much an inexpensive gem. Uh, Elizabeth Taylor, for those of you who don't know, was one of the hugest female movie stars from the 20, 20th century. Uh, famous, her peak, I guess I would say, is kind of the 1960s. One of the most famous films was Cleopatra, where she starred alongside Richard Burton, who she ended up having an affair with, and they became a couple. Very, very glamorous, beautiful woman. And uh, she went on right into the 80s and, and 90s as still a big, big name. I think she was friends with Wacko Jacko, Michael Jackson too. This fragrance then, I think it's described just as a woody aromatic or something. Sort of a bit of a fougere vibe, but it's, it's more than that. It's not a typical 80s powerhouse fragrance, although it has some of that old school 80s vibe and is a little bit dated smelling in a good kind of fun way. 1980 releases, I say. There's a ton of notes here. You'll pick up on some kind of fruity notes in the opening, a little bit citrusy, but sort of almost a little bit of a black uh, black currant or fruit, uh, gen generic kind of fruitiness in keeping with the very dark purple, rather nice Art Deco bottle. Uh, there's, a, I think, quite a lot of lavender and a bit of cinnamon in here. Some people even compare it to things like uh, Obsession for Men from Calvin Klein, and there is a similarity. It's, it's herbal, it, it is quite green, but it's combining a greenness with a little bit of a fruitiness, a hint of sweetness, a sort of a slightly powdery vibe, and this spiciness. Very, very grown up, very classy stuff. Bit of sandalwood in there as well with some patchouli. If you like your powerhouse fragrances, but you prefer a little bit more sweetness, 
maybe some spice in there than the sort of very green fougeres of the mid 80s uh, or the late 80s, things like Gucci Nobile or Lapidus Pour Homme or whatever, or you, you know, you don't want a Coros smell. This one is a really interesting, fun, uh, inexpensive gem with a, a great bottle design to have on your shelf, like 16 pounds. What have you got to lose, guys? Elizabeth Taylor, Passion for Men, very rarely spoken about, thanks to Chris from Scentland. I think he drew my attention to this one as a bit of a good one. Maybe it was Lania Smith too, who's also mentioned it. Performance on this one, pretty good to my nose. Right now, next up, it's another UK perfumer involved here. This one is called Fawn, and it's from the new emerging house of Ouch 110 Creations. That's the, that's the name of the house. Ouch 110 is the name of the fragrance channel of a really great fragrance reviewer based in the UK. I will link his channel in the description. Now you may think, oh goodness, not another reviewer, YouTuber doing a fragrance line, but this is a different story because Thomas O'Brien, the man behind the brand, apart from being a great reviewer, is someone who has studied perfumery himself and has worked in the industry. So he is the perfumer for the fragrance. This is a different entity to a lot of the other stuff out there at the moment. Fawn, lovely story behind this one. So a fawn is a kind of impish creature which you find in the forest, a fictional, of course, half man and half goat. Is that right? I think so. Uh, there's one in the story Narnia, isn't there, by C.S. Lewis, and um, he's a kind of a naughty character. He's a bit of a bad guy in the beginning, but it turns out he was forced to be naughty by the evil white queen, wasn't he? And in, in the end, he's kind of good at heart. And I always liked that story. So maybe Thomas was inspired by that. I don't know. The little guy here looks reminds me of the pictures of that guy in the uh, in that book. So I'll give you the note listing for this exquisite floral green fragrance would be a, a quick way of describing it. Maybe uh, you've got bergamot, lotus, fresh herbs, English tea, freesia, aldehydes, fig, tobacco, jasmine, musk, peony, opopanax, dark amber, sandalwood and tonka. So a really, really complex. Uh, just reading the note listing, I kind of think I'm going to like this and God damn it. Yes, I do. So it's certainly a little bit green. There are quite a few green notes in there. There's some lovely floral tones in there. Uh, and there's also a great deal of complexity, a little bit of spiciness, all kinds of things. A bit of a vintage vibe too with the aldehydes. I know Thomas loves his vintage fragrances. It's not really very, very vintage, old fashioned smelling, but there's a, a nod to those of us who, who like that kind of thing. We may enjoy that aspect of this one. So a little bit aldehydic, green, fresh, definitely little bit forest-esque but no, in no way like a really green fougere or even maybe quite a sheep but I'm not sure um, and then there's this kind of spiciness there's a little accord of tobacco in there which is makes things really interesting there's also a bit of English tea which is you know you can pick up something a bit tea like as I wouldn't say it jumps out as a note but there's so much going on in this it's green it's fresh it's a little bit herbal there's some spices and some woods a lovely kind of sandalwood accord you can pick up there on the dry down Excellent stuff. You can really tell excellent ingredients have gone into this and he is a superb, I think, up and coming perfumer. Fawn, I think it is 30, it just comes in a 30 mil size. I think it's 50 pounds and you get it through the Etsy store, which means it ships worldwide. So if you're in the States or elsewhere, you can still get it. I will link that in the description. He did give it to me for free, but I was very grateful and uh, we, we kind of swapped because I sent him Gravitas. So thank you ever so much, Thomas, for this. It is a superb release. Guys, I really think you should check this out. Link in the description. Okay, last but not least, I'm stretching the definition of hidden gem here a bit, but who cares? I can do what I want, it's my channel. Original Vetiver by Creed. Okay, it's not a massively hidden gem, but it's, uh, it's probably not many people's favorite creed. Not many people rave about this one. Often derided as being very similar to Moogler Cologne by Moogler. That came out in the year 2000, four years later, Creed released original vetiver. Perfumers for this one, allegedly Olivier Creed, the father and the son, er Erwin Creed. The note listing for this one, you've got bitter orange bergamot mandarin vetiver, white pepper, coriander, pink pepper, sandalwood vetiver, ambergris and musk, not many of those notes jump out at me, I've got to be honest with you. Uh, basically, it's a very beautiful, soapy, grassy, green, slightly citrusy scent. Moogler Cologne originally was supposed to recreate the smell of a fantastic bar of soap uh, that Thierry Moogler had found in Morocco as a child or remembered. And uh, this is kind of doing the same thing. They do smell very similar. The difference, this one, that one is very clean, fresh, soapy, and just sort of feels like it stays the same throughout. Very simple, but very nice and a very affordable fragrance. This one you're paying a lot more money, but for that 500% price increase, maybe you're getting this five or 10% extra magic, which you may think is worthwhile. There's a slight complexity here. There's, there's a bit of a different 
levels of stuff going on, almost a sweetness and a spiciness within that vetiver. On Creed's website in the blurb, they say they've used different bits of the vetiver plant. Normally just the root is used. They reckon they've kind of used some of the more grassy, leafy bits at the top or, or whatever. And it does have this very, very beautiful fresh air. It's not a heavy vetiver scent if you think of Guerlain's vetiver or uh, Terre d'Hermes. You're not going to pick out the vetiver in the way that you do in that one. But it's just subtly in there. Maybe that it's got that grassy element of vetiver as well as the earthy rootsy side of it. And then some lovely soapiness, little hints of citrus there. And when you wear it, different stuff comes up on your skin at different parts of the day. Or I often put a load on my shirt too. And you get different wafts of different stuff. It's clever, subtle stuff. It can seem underwhelming if you just go in a shop and smell it next to all the other creeds, but wear it. Use it as your signature scent for the office. Spray quite heavily because it's not the best performer and you'll find there's hidden magic in this underrated gem. Maybe not a hidden gem totally, but a slightly under the radar gem from the historic house of Creed. Guys, let me know what you thought of about all that in the description. No, not in the description. In the comments would be better. And I will see you in the next video. Remember, whatever you're doing in life, let's project. Bye-bye.